The Dead Minds mini set for Stormwind has been out for several weeks now, and while we did release a quick and dirty version of our Achievement Hunter series shortly after it arrived to hull break through them quickly, there's a link up above you can check out. We still wanted to make a tailored version of our mini set edition to include wild decks and a few fun alternatives. So for all the achievement gluttons watching this, welcome to the full version. Let's get into it. Huh. This should be interesting. In this video, we're covering all 12 achievements introduced with the mini set, which are Even Playing Field, encouraging us to have both minions survive Proving Grounds 20 times. Por que no los dos? Hiring us to split 40 Choose One spells. Carry on, my wayward son. Luring us into repeating the death rattles of 16 different cards with Monstrous Parrot. And I prefer leftovers, asking us to cook up a 12-12 or bigger Arcane Remnant when casting Arcane Overflow. We've also got Robin Hood, calling on us to swap two minions with a difference of 10 attack using Wealth Redistributor. Should have seen this coming, plotting to have us destroy our opponent with a card we've copied from them as Priest. They're more like guidelines, coercing us into parlaying with our opponent eight times in one game. And thanks for the loner thrall, duping us into using Sucker Hook to transform our weapon into a legendary weapon. And the last four are Who Ordered Imps? Ordering us to fill our entire side of the board with imps from a single wicked shipment. Hammer down! Commissioning us to equip a seven durability blacksmithing hammer. Sneed's new shredder giving us the blueprints to Goliath's rockets and pushing us to destroy a hundred minions with them. And finally, Magician's Assistant, having us conjure five cards from our deck with a single multicaster. Aside from the Priest achievement, none of these require that we win games to complete, so we can formulate unusual strategies to complete these when it makes things more interesting or efficient. All our guides include timestamps for each achievement and deck codes for each deck mentioned in the description below in case you'd like to jump to one you're looking for. Now, let's man the cannons and blast our way through these achievements. Let's tackle these in class order, meaning we're setting up an even playing field first. For this one, as long as every minion in the deck has more health than the highest attack minion, we just need to play Proving Grounds 20 times while there are minions left in the deck to draw. Sadly, although both minions survive the Proving Grounds when Imprisoned Antion is pulled, it doesn't give progress towards the achievement, so our decks don't include it. The first deck we're recommending, which we use to knock this out in Standard, is the one we introduced in the Quick and Dirty Guide. Proving Frenzied Life Demon Hunter. We had quite a few great games with the deck, which led to us making a gameplay highlight video linked in the description. Since the minions have to survive hitting each other, the deck has some fun synergies with Frenzy, gaining armor or killing an enemy minion, and making Bone Chewer Vanguard a much more threatening taunt right away. And Ilganoth gets an immediate 4 damage on the opponent's face when pulled from the deck which the Fell Scream Blast, Eldrachi Warblades, and Chaos Leech can all shift towards damaging the opponent even more when he survives. A surprising number of opponents weren't able to deal with Arcane Devourer quickly, which meant we were often able to play a couple of our low-cost spells and get quite a bit of value from him. So if you're looking for guaranteed progress from each Proving Grounds, this is a fun deck which felt pretty strong. We went 11 and 7 for a 61% win rate. Now, if you don't care about the deck having a high win rate, since we don't have to win games to complete this achievement, you could try out this next deck in Wild. As we mentioned earlier, as long as every minion has more health than the highest attack minion, we can guarantee progress on this achievement. That lets us explore some truly bizarre directions, such as this Murloc Proving Grounds. Yes, we made a um, <clears throat> remarkable Murloc Demon Hunter deck, which will guarantee progress on this achievement. You're not likely to win mini games with the deck, but it should be fun. 
With so many minions, it's extremely unlikely you'll run into the issue of being out of minions to pull with Proving Grounds. But if you do, you can trade Traveling Merchant back into the deck or shuffle your lowest cost minion back into the deck with Safety Inspector, hoping you get a spell instead of the final minions. There's a ton of card draw built into the deck, including Acolyte of Pain, who will draw you a card when he comes off of Proving Grounds. And Archmage Vargoth can cast an extra Proving Grounds for you when he's one of the fighters. Sadly, Old Murkai has his attack buff right when he's pulled from Proving Grounds, and since we can't include powerful synergy cards like Murloc Warleader, the Murloc package fizzles out before finishing off most opponents. However, they should help fight for the board long enough to draw Proving Grounds and play it out against all but the most busted decks. You can apply this health versus attack concept to any set of minions you like, but Murloc Demon Hunter struck us as particularly fun to try. Best of luck evening out the playing field. Next up, we've got Por que no los dos for Druid. We actually didn't remember to test Keeper Stelladris to see if he counts for this, but this is really quick to pull off with Jerry Rig Carpenter, especially with all the tutor cards available in Wild. That's why the first deck we're covering for this achievement is this Wild Roots Carpentry, Wild Token Druid. Since Jerry Rig Carpenter is a pirate, Captain's Parrot can pull her from the deck, and Living Seed can pull the parrot out meaning that most games we can get one or both Carpenters before drawing all the copies of our Choose One spells, Living Roots and Power of the Wild. This is the deck we used to knock the achievement out, and it had a nice 65% win rate across 23 games. So it's fairly swift to get progress, and you can climb the ladder a bit while knocking this out. In Standard, you could just play Aggro Taunt Druid with Sow the Soil for decently fast progress but we're going to suggest an Anaconda Druid with a bit of an interesting twist, Archspore Meshifen. Just like your typical Anaconda Druid, this deck has Jerry Carpenter to pull Nourish from the deck more reliably and get double the value, which is particularly strong after Celestial Alignment. And the deck can do a crazy pop-off turn with Lady Anaconda, like you might expect, but if you've thinned out your deck a fair bit, Moonlit Guidance can be used to generate additional copies of Meshifen Prime for even more massive boards of taunts or giant rushing spore monsters. Normal Anaconda Druid will probably have a higher win rate. We went 7 and 6 for a 54% win rate. But it's fun to see just how many Meshifen you can summon with help from Germinate and Moonlit Guidance. If you'd like to see the deck in action, there's a gameplay highlight linked alongside the deck code below. Have fun choosing both. For hunters, we have Carry On, My Wayward Son. This asks us to have Monstrous Parrot repeat the death rattles of 16 different cards. And neither of the decks we're introducing have 16 different death rattles, so you will have to do some minion swapping after every game or a couple games. With cards like Selective Breeder and Carrion Studies, alongside a fair number of death rattles, this one is pretty swift to knock out. The deck we introduced in our Quick and Dirty Guide is the one we used to knock this out, but this monstrous Death Hunter from HS Replay also includes a fair number of death rattle minions alongside two copies of Carrion Studies. You can get a couple extra death rattles pulled from the deck more quickly thanks to Tavish but he can also pull your monstrous parrots if you're not careful. So make sure you have the copies of the parrot you want to play in hand before attacking with Teacher's Pet and Tavish. If you just keep track of which death rattles you've managed to copy and swap for other cheaper death rattles after each game, it'll be done quite quickly. Though in Wild, it's possible to get even more progress per game with this monstrous Tracker's Call deck. It includes Stitch Tracker and Northshire Farmer alongside Selective Breeder for an entire flock of monstrous parrots to repeat the five Death Rattle minion slots and two Carrion Studies minions you discover. With Scavenger's Ingenuity and Leatherworking Kit for Beasts and Master's Call with Tracking for Others, you can whip through this achievement faster than Carrion could clean a corpse. 
disturbing imagery, I know, but you can blame Blizzard for the achievement names. Good luck taming these monstrous parrots. For more things you wouldn't want to eat, let's move on to the mage achievement where we need to summon a 1212 or bigger arcane remnant with arcane overflow for I prefer leftovers. If we're targeting a minion with one health, that means we need at least five spell damage to summon a 1212 remnant. Fortunately, the deck we used to knock this out and recommended in our initial guide doesn't rely on the mage questline, so the nerf doesn't impact the deck at all. With this overflowing spell damage mage, you can cast a 13 damage or higher arcane overflow a lot earlier if you're able to drop an imprisoned phoenix or two a couple turns before you plan to play arcane overflow. But with primordial studies and a couple lab partners, a single spell damage minion surviving on board can give you the damage you need fairly easily, even if you have to target one of the low health minions from your own deck. Star Scryer, Frostweave Dungeoneer, and Deepwater Evoker can help you find your Primordial Studies and Arcane Overflow quite quickly. And Cram Session is just one more way to cycle super fast. So you should be able to assemble the pieces you need for the combo very efficiently. Or if you got the cards for Mozaki Mage in Wild, this Mozaki's Arcane Overflow will allow you to conjure a massive Arcane Remnant or two, very consistently by relying on mages' insane spell discounts and card draw in wild. It plays exactly like Mozaki Mage, but you may have to wait an extra turn or two to go in on Mozaki, since even with discounts, Arcane Overflow is an expensive spell for the deck. If the opponent didn't leave you a target for your overflow, Sources and Apprentices are apparently bundles of arcane energy to be sacrificed in a pinch. I may have been playing too much Warlock lately. Anyways, best of luck summoning massive leftovers. Are you ready to play Robin Hood? With the plethora of buffs available and the strength of the archetype, you shouldn't have much difficulty using Wealth Redistributor to swap at least 10 attack. The standard we used to knock this out was this redistributed buffs paladin, which is just a hand buff paladin from HS Replay, which includes wealth redistributors in place of underlight angling rods. If the last spell you cast on a friendly minion was Blessing of Authority, Sunwing Squawker will go to 11 attack, meaning any dude, righteous protector, or knight of anointment sticking on the board will accept the 10 attack from it for an achievement complete. Or, if the opponent has a 1 attack minion, that'll count too, but you might die moments later. Your call. But if you're going to knock this out, why just swap 10 health? Why not like 30 or more? With this Sun Sorrows distribution paladin deck in wild, that's entirely possible. We only swapped 37 attack with the redistributor when we did it, but there's potential for at least twice that much with this deck. The idea is to use Linessa Sunsaro to copy all of the buffs you've played over the course of the game, and then Wealth Redistributor can swap her attack to whichever minion has the lowest attack for achievement complete. But to do that, you will need Emperor Thaurasan's help to drop Sunsaro and the Redistributor by one mana apiece. But since Linessa is a 1-1, Christology or Salhet's Pride can pull her into hand if you've drawn a couple of your other small buff minions. Just be careful she doesn't fatigue you to death as she will recast Hand of a Doll and Potions of Heroism on herself when you play her. Now the only question is, how much attack will you redistribute from the rich to the poor? Good luck. And next we have Priest. Considering we're going in order, I guess you should have seen this coming. Sorry, I had to. Um, so, for this one, as long as the card is a copy from your opponent and it deals lethal damage in the form of hitting them as a minion or a direct damaging spell, it will work. But directly stolen minions, spells that set up damage but don't do it themselves, or a few other scenarios can lead to you killing the opponent without getting credit. While copycat is certainly one way to get a copied resource from the opponent to work with dealing lethal damage, there are a whole lot of other copy cards 
Priest can cram into a deck to make this a lot more reliable. The deck we used to pull this off was this viewer submitted deck which includes Psychic Conjurer, Soothsayer's Caravan, Copycat, Mindrender Lucia, the Nameless One, Keymaster Alabaster, and Soul Mirror, all as different ways to get a copy of resources from our opponent with which to kill them. As you can see here, the Scrapyard Colossus we received from Psychic Conjurer was the card to deal lethal damage and complete the achievement. There's a highlight video linked in the description of the whole game where we knock this out if you'd like to see the deck in action and the choices we made to set up the finishing blow. A challenge for Priest will be orchestrating lethal with the opponent's resource without them conceding. That will be a challenge with whatever deck you use, but if you're looking for a deck which can push your opponent to the brink of death quite quickly so that you can use the card copied from them to kill them off, this Stolen Shadows Wild deck fits the bill. With the right draws, you can pump out a ridiculous amount of damage extremely quickly, meaning that even if the card copied from the opponent only does a tiny bit of damage, there's a good chance you can set things up to finish them with it. The copy cards you won't see in Standard, which give this an edge for relatively little mana, are Crystalline Oracle, Mind Vision, Thought Steel, and Madame Lazul. Alongside a few others we saw in the Standard deck, it shouldn't take too many games to find a card you can use to strike lethal damage. Another viewer suggested that this achievement can be pulled off in duels quite effectively as well, since health totals start out lower there, and there are quite a few copy options available there as well. The Fractured Spirit's Signature Treasure is a good start, and careful selection of a few cards with copy options in deck building can set you up for success. Good luck taking down an opponent, even when they see it coming. A number of people have mentioned that they're more like guidelines, is a tough one to complete because opponents often refuse to play along and use the copy of parlay you give them. And yeah, unless you're very fortunate to run into a cooperative opponent on the ladder or in duels, that's not gonna pan out for quite some time. So we set out to build decks where we can complete this achievement even if our opponent refuses to play a single copy. The trick is to play Elix to give yourself and your opponent additional copies of Parlay so that you can play a bunch more yourself and sometimes get Parlay from the opponent's deck when you play Parlay. The standard deck we use to knock this out is this educational Parlay deck which uses the field contact draw engine to cycle through the deck and get us our educated Elix and Parlays. If you're fortunate, Wandmaker could generate an additional Parlay as well. But, as you can see in the gameplay video linked above and in the description, the first 8 parlays of the game were all played by us without our opponent ever playing a copy themselves. Then, after the achievement was already complete, the opponent got on board and parlayed what they needed from our deck to kill us. But still, achievement complete. However, it's even more reliable in Wild when you add Augmented Elix to the mix as well. This Edwin's Parlay Elix Rogue takes the new Edwin Super Buff and Super Draw Deck shell and slots in both types of Elix and a couple Parlays so that you can draw them extremely quickly. Shadow stepping a super buffed Edwin to use as card draw on a follow up turn rather than concealing him to go face as a finisher does feel kind of funky, but completing the achievement insanely quickly is worth it. Since Augmented Elix shuffles extra parlays into your opponent's deck and it'll give you additional copies from your educated Elix, you could potentially have several dozen parlays filling both decks by the end of the game. Getting to 8 parlays shouldn't take long at all when Elix come to the negotiation table. Best of luck forcing your opponents to parlay. While a fair number of the achievements are easier to pull off in Wild, thanks for the loner thrall, is one that I really recommend going after in Wild if at all possible. In our quick and dirty guide, we shared an elemental shaman deck which is linked in the description for reference, 
but it uses Auction House Gavel and Rune Dagger in hopes that Sucker Hook will transform them into a bulwark of Azanoth or Rinling's Rifle. That's aiming at one of the 12 3 mana weapons and one of the 10 4 mana weapons available in Standard, which means your chances of completing this are really low. But if you take the same exact deck to Wild and swap the weapons for Doomhammers and another Elemental, playing Sucker Hook with a Doomhammer equipped will give you a 2 in 4 chance at getting a Legendary right away. And if you can keep Suckerhook alive to transform a couple more times, you've got a 1 in 6 chance at 7 mana, or a 2 in 3 chance at 8 mana at rolling a legendary weapon. The increase in odds alone is worth venturing into wild even if you never play the mode. Though if you're going into wild and have a bit of a collection for the mode, you might try the deck we use to complete this. You're doomed, sucker. Shaman. It uses the Shaman questline synergy with the Spirit of the Frog to cycle through the deck extremely quickly, and you can draw Sucker Hook reliably with Captain's Parrot, while Cage Match Custodian will pull Doomhammer into hand. Plop a Drakari Enchanter down alongside Sucker Hook, and you'll get two transformations in a turn, getting you to opportunities at 6 through 8 mana weapons quite quickly and reliably. We've got a highlight video for this deck knocking out the achievement linked in the description in case you'd like to see how it plays out. Here's wishing you luck reeling in a legendary transformation. Next up, we've got Who Ordered Imps for Warlocks? To knock this one out, we need to trade and draw a copy of Wicked Shipment three times before playing it onto an empty board. That's it. With just one copy of Wicked Shipment in the deck, you could just make a deck with 29 minions, including Hullbreaker, to draw the Wicked Shipment repeatedly and fairly quickly. But we chose to slot it into a zoo deck with a Nightshade Matron Hand of Gul'dan draw engine. Wicked Whispers and Shady Bartender were fun follow-ups to make use of our full board of imps. Though in Wild, you can have a bit more fun with the Wicked Shipment as a setup for a full board Darkest Hour. Since we're only running one copy of the Wicked Shipment and no Rafam Scheme or Fiendish Circle, the Darkest Hour won't be coming down as quickly as other Darkest Hour decks, but the plot twists alongside Supreme Archaeology Quest will help you find the Wicked Shipments a little faster after trading it back into the deck. and. Darkest Hour is a fun, massive payoff once you've completed the achievement. Enjoy flooding the board with imps and shocking opponents with how you use them. Pirate Warrior is pretty strong right now, and Blacksmithing Hammer is a decent inclusion in the deck, so you may already be done with this. But if not, we've got a couple decks which will help you get 7 durability or more on your Blacksmithing Hammer very quickly. You can still knock this out quickly using the tutor cards we'll be showing even if you don't have the warrior questline, but both decks we're introducing run the questline due to the weapon draw synergy with this achievement. In standard, you can try this Thor's Hammer Pirate Warrior which uses the questline and two Corsair Caches to pull the hammer into hand. Even if you don't draw it naturally once, after three tutors and tossing it away twice, it'll be at 7 durability thanks to the Corsair cash buffs. The deck is also running Nitro Boost Poisons, so once you complete the achievement, you'll need to decide whether you prefer smacking your opponent around with a 9-7 weapon, or sacrificing it to the amazing value Rokara's Juggernaut provides. In Wild, there are even more weapon tutor and hand buff cards available, so you might complete this achievement a turn or two faster with this Forge the Hammer Warrior. It runs Forge of Souls alongside Corsair Cash, and the questline is Tutors, and Grime Street Pawnbroker can buff the hammer when it's in your hand. There aren't any Nitro Boost Poisons in this version, but you'll still have to choose between Amazing Value for the hammer's extra durability, or Rokara's Super Value. Have fun completely hammering down your opponent. Now onto the neutral achievements, starting with Magician's Assistant. 
For this one, we either have to cast spells from five different spell schools before playing Multicaster, or we need to cast three different spell schools before dropping Brand Bronzebeard and Multicaster. The deck we used to knock this out relatively swiftly was this Lunatic Multicaster Mage. It runs Frost, Fire, Arcane, and even a Shadow spell with Mask of Cthune alongside Deck of Lunacy. After Deck of Lunacy goes off, hopefully you'll draw into one spell from the remaining three schools fairly quickly so that Multicaster can draw you the five cards for the achievement. We've received confirmation from a couple viewers that drawing fatigue instead of cards will still count for the achievement as long as Multicaster is set to draw five. However, mages aren't the only ones who can knock this out in standard fairly reliably. Another viewer reminded us that rogues already have access to a frost school with brain freeze and the arcane school with potion of illusion, meaning that a fire spell from wand thief will provide a fifth spell school alongside the plethora of shadow and nature spells rogue usually runs. So this multicasting shank rogue runs all of those cards alongside Shadow Step and Tenwu to bounce Wand Thief in case she's not delivering fire spells right away. With the ridiculous amount of card draw, it shouldn't be hard to find all the spells you need to prep Multicaster, but you might end up fatiguing yourself to death with them. Still, achievement complete. Though if you really want to cycle like mad, this multicast much? Shaman in Wild will burn through the achievement in no time. With Frost Shock, Primordial Studies, and Haunting Visions complementing the nature and fire spells of the deck, an early Spirit of the Frog can whip through each spell school you need remarkably quickly. And if you didn't get that online, by the time you reach 7 mana and can play Bran into Multicaster, surely you'll have played spells from three different spell schools allowing you to draw six cards with one multicaster. Good luck zapping through your deck with multicaster. And the last achievement from the mini set is Sneed's new Shredder. For this one, we've got to destroy 100 minions with Goliath's rockets. Although Brilliant Macaw and Shutterwalk repeating Goliath's battle cry don't count, there are still several ways to speed up progress on this one. The first way we're recommending is drawing to Sneed's Masterpiece quickly with Insight in a deck with just a few minions. This Sneed's Insightful Guide Priest runs the questline as a supplementary draw engine to pair with the control package necessary to survive to play Goliath out. Deeprun Engineer also has a fairly high probability of discovering Sneed's Masterpiece, and Raise Dead can also be used to bring back Deeprun Engineer or Goliath, so playing Goliath three to five times per game isn't out of the question for this deck. With a discount from Insight and the discount from Deeprun Engineer, it's actually possible for your six, seven, and eight cost cards knocking out the questline to all be copies of Goliath. It only happened once for us, but it was funny when it did. Or if you're looking for a deck that can guarantee progress from Goliath when you play him, you could try this Sneed's Shank Rogue. It runs Shadow Step and Tenwu to bounce the masterpiece multiple times per game. And with a little help from Efficient Octobot or the Shadow Step discounts, you can play Terror Guard Escapee and Goliath on the same turn for at least three guaranteed progress. Will you win many games with this deck? Probably not. Our win rate was horrendous. But if all of your opponents are refusing to play minions or only play massive minions, this might help you progress through the achievement a bit faster. Though the deck that felt the fastest at getting progress for this achievement was this wild Sneed's Shadowy Seance Priest. It's a Shadow Priest deck running Seance and Raise Dead for additional copies of Goliath. We can get even more copies of Seance from Shadow Visions, and with only four minions in the deck, our Insight has a high chance of drawing it at a discount. 
the light shower elementals are great at keeping us alive alongside the shadow package to control the board long enough for us to get Goliath online and start the value train. It'll take a while with whichever decks you use, but best of luck blasting through a hundred minions with Goliath's rockets. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, drop a like. Your righteous defense of the like button can encourage YouTube to provide moonlit guidance towards this videos for others looking to hammer through these achievements. There are more Hearthstone highlights coming, and we'll be sure to jerry-rig some guides for the Alterac Valley achievements too, so check back soon or subscribe so that the Crow's Nest Lookout can let you know when new videos arrive. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy participating in Experiments Live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day. I wonder how many people will get the Goliath Online reference.